Let me share with you the ultimate low budget Facebook ad strategy. What's popping people? It's your boy the beast of Ecom back with another video dropping the thing, but you already know value bombs. So in today's video, I'm going to share with you guys the ultimate low budget Facebook ads testing strategy that you can use if you're on a lower budget. Really quickly, if this is the first time ever watching one of my videos, then make sure you hit the like, comment, and of course, make sure you smash that subscribe button and be sure to, of course, to hit the notification bell as well so that you stay up to date with all of my content and become a part of the Beast Gang. So I get quite a few questions from people saying, I've only got X amount, is it enough to get started with Facebook adverts? Or, you know, I've only got this amount, what's the best strategy to use to get up and running with Facebook? Well, I'm gonna share with you guys in this video today a strategy that's going to allow you to test products at a lower budget and hopefully still get results really quickly i am doing a comment giveaway on this video so if you want to win 25 dollars for 100 percent free tested on adverts then all you got to do is comment down below hashtag beast gang along with a comment of what you learned or what you liked about this video and i'll pick someone at total random so let's quit the talking let's jump straight into the computer and learn this low budget facebook strategy right so let's jump straight into this video on the ultimate low budget facebook ad strategy 2019 I'm gonna go into quite a bit of depth into this video I'm actually gonna show you how to set up the campaign I'm gonna mention some very very important things in this video so make sure you don't skip through any of it make sure you watch it all the way to the end because you're gonna get maximum value that way and most importantly go out and implement this strategy into your business now what I will say before actually moving forward is um, you know it's very important that if you haven't got the money or you've only got $200 or so, then yes, you could still use the strategy, but you're gonna pretty much have to, it's gonna limit the amount of products that you can test. The more budget that you do have to play with, the better, of course, success that you're going to have and the more that you can test. So my question to people saying, oh, I haven't got enough money, can I get up and running? Just save more money, okay? If you can save up to you know $800 to $1,000, then, uh, then great. If you've got $500, then you can still use the strategy. However, you know, uh, it's going to limit the amount of products that you can test. However, so the first thing we need to talk about is the products. Okay. Now products, if you've got a low budget, well, what you need to do is very much budget products come down to, you know, it doesn't matter if what, what your budget is. If your product is crap, it does, it's not going to make any sales whatsoever. So first and foremost, find a product that solves a problem or is cool, quirky and unique and has a wow effect that you can sell to a passionate audience a very important last sentence there because people find cool and quirky products but they're not being sold to a passionate audience let's just say for example a a phone cover or something it may be a cool phone cover but if it's not being sold to a passionate audience such as like dogs or uh, cats or something like that lovers then you're not going to generally make any sales now, second point, I recommend that you go for lower ticket products. Now, they're more likely to convert as higher ticket products would, of course, require you to spend more per purchase. Now, that is because if the product is a higher price, let's say, for example, $50, then it's not really an impulse buy on Facebook. And that's what we're doing, impulse buying on Facebook. So, you know, you're going to have to spend more money to acquire a customer if your product is, let's say, $60. So I recommend if you've got a low budget, Generally try and go for low ticket products, okay? Now third point, aim for a break even ROAS of 1.5 or below. Now again, this makes things much more achievable uh, with the budget that you have. Now if your break even ROAS is two or three, then you know your advert's gonna have to be very pretty solid for you to be able to be profitable. Now your next question may be, okay, so how do I work out my break even ROAS? Very good question, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. So basically your break even ROAS is your product selling price divided by the net profit that you have once you took away your cost of goods. So your break that equals your break even ROAS. So an example there, we've got let's say for example we're selling a product at 19.99, okay? And um, our profit on the product is 14.99. Um, which is giving us a, you know, the product cost is $5. So, you know, $19.99 take away $5 is $14.99. And then that's going to, when we do that calculations, that's going to give us a break even ROAS of 1.33. So we know that our ROAS is going to be 1.33, which means when we run our adverts and they're going, um, you know, they're below 1.33, then we know we're losing money. If they're at 1.33, we're breaking even. And uh, of course, if they're higher, they're 1 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 2x, or whatever, we're making money. So let me show you a setup example now of this and go into the meat of bones and how you can actually set up this campaign because there's some very important things that you need to uh, look into. 
So let's just head over to Ads Manager and uh, what you want to do is click Create. And once this loads up, we want to just call it, I'm just going to call it WC, which is Website Conversion, Low Budget Example. Now we want to go Conversions and uh, of course we want to make sure that we're doing Purchase. So uh, let's just call this one, I'm just going to call it Top English because that's what I like to call it. And we're going to go to 25 to 65. And then I'll normally put the name of the interest. So name of interest. You'd put that in there, okay, for example. And now, of course, we just want to do a creative one. So let's save to draft. So once we've done that now, and this is all loaded up, let's just wait for it. And let me just filter on this campaign uh, and we want to go into ad set so let's say for example we're selling a I don't know let's just say we're selling a real cheap dog uh, dog product or something like that okay a real cheap um, dog collar again product you know you can sell whatever you want but um, I'm just going to show you the product um, so event we want to make sure that we're clicking on purchase now, of course, this ad account's a, an old ad account, so this is obviously red. Uh, if you've got purchases, then it would be green. Even if it's on red and you're just starting out, then select purchases because we want a Facebook to send us purchased, people who are willing to purchase our product. Okay, so you want to go purchase. Now, daily budget, if you're on a very cheap budget, then you can do $5. Again, $5 ads do work. Um, I test with more nowadays because my budget's a lot bigger. However, 5 to $10 is good with a low budget. $5 ads, again, they do still work. However, it just takes longer to get your ad data. Um, so, so yeah, you can set this at $5. Let's say, for example, very, very um, low. Now, I'm just going to target. Uh, let me just show you how to do your target. So, you want to do, uh, generally, if you're starting, you just want to do top English or e-packet countries. So, let's just do e-packet countries. And there's some of these e-packet countries that I've taken out. I'm going to show you in a moment. At this point here, we want to make sure it's um, not everyone in this location. We want to make sure it's people who live in this location. So everyone in is going to be people from holiday or people all over the place, just, you know, passers by us. But everyone who live in this is where they've actually selected. That's where they live. Now, to find the e-packet countries, you can just do a Google search. Uh, again, this is a whole list here of the e-packet countries. However, there's some of these on here which I would generally take out. So Brazil, I generally don't like to sell Brazil because the uh, customs is pretty crap and their postal system is awful. Uh, again, Hong Kong wouldn't, would probably take that out as well. Indonesia, low current traffic, low quality traffic, sorry, I'll take that out. Kazakhstan, again, I'll take that out. Japan, I'll take that out. Korea, I'll take that out. Uh, Mexico, I'll probably take that out as well. Saudi Arabia, Thailand. So there's some of them that I actually would take out, okay, just because they're they're low quality traffic, even though they do still do e-packet. So I've generally I've already saved that, and you can you know you can save those things if you want to. Now, depending on obviously the product that you're selling, let's say if we for example we're going for women for this product, we'd select women. Again, if it's a men product or it's applicable to both, you'd click all. Now, in terms of age ranges, I generally like to go for, depending on obviously the product, but most of the time, kind of either 21 or 25. And the reason why that is, is because those people have got the credit cards most of the time. They're willing to purchase on Facebook. Um, you know, people who are under 21 and 18 generally don't purchase. They're just clickers and will just eat up your budget. Now, going down, let's just say, for example, we are selling a, um, you know, a, a dog product and we just put in... Um, Pug, for example, as one of our interests. And we want to make sure that we're doing single interest as well. So single interest per ad set. So you can see we've got 8 million here. And if we scroll down here. Now, automatic placements is absolutely everywhere. And I'm a very big advocate for doing automatic placements. A lot of people still only stick to news feeds and, um, you know, Instagram. And the reason why I don't do that anymore is because very much when I break down my data, I can see 
crazy ROAS coming in from places such as marketplace, suggested videos, um, you know, stories, all sorts of places. So I generally select automatic budget, automatic placements. However, if you've got a low budget, what I recommend you do is just go in for uh, mobile. Okay, so you just select mobile, and again, leave all of these in here. You're still gonna get. Um, Messenger, you're still going to get all sorts of different places. You're going to get the marketplace. Um, so you're still going to get all of these, okay? Instant articles and, you know, suggested videos. You know, I get crazy robots from some of these places. So again, some people just like the feeds, but it's very expensive to put target in the feeds. So mobile and leave all of these as is. Conversions, um, obviously this is saying that my pixel hasn't got any sales on it, but um, we we'll just leave that like this. And generally I always go seven days, one day click, okay? So that is how you would pretty much set up the, the advert to start with. So we see we've got all of that like that. Now another thing which a lot of people don't do uh, if you've got a low budget is they just focus on one creative. And um, you know if you've only got one creative, what's gonna happen is you're pinning all your hopes just on that one creative. Now that's a very bad idea. Facebook is very much a machine and it machine learns, it's, it's algorithm based, which means it's constantly trying to connect the best things to the best things to the best things all of the time. So if you're only pinning your hopes on one ad creative, then you're very much not giving Facebook anything to play with it, no variables into the system. So what I generally recommend if you've got a low budget is generally just create two, um, two creatives, you know, different creatives. And uh, we can do that by just simply clicking on the duplicate button. And uh, if we just duplicate that like that, and uh, what's going to happen then is it's going to duplicate it. Now we'd make changes to it, of course, and we can just call this one creative two. And would change it. You could use the same video but have a different thumbnail. You could use the same video but have a um, you know different ad copy. But only try and isolate just one variable. So whether it be just changing your ad copy, same video, or same ad copy, different thumbnails. Try and isolate just one variable. But it's always good to have two creatives there when you're running because, like I've mentioned, Facebook is very much a machine and it needs inputs into the algorithm. Then the better it's going to perform. So two creatives um, like that. Now, generally, obviously you'd set that up, so I'm not gonna go into creating a uh, creative, but um, there we go. So then we've got our ad like this. We've got our low budget one. Now again, duplicating, we wanna do as many as we our budget can kind of allow, but generally the minimum we wanna go for is at least five, because the more ad sets that we can test, the better. However, um, you know, you don't wanna go all out if your budget's really low. So if your budget's really low, I recommend just going with like five to start with, but if you've got a bit, little bit more, we can test like eight to 10, that's ideal, eight to 10 different interests. But if your budget isn't as big, you could test like six to eight, but minimum is five, don't really go less than five. So uh, I'm just gonna do six here. So um, we've done that like that, and we've got five. So it's gonna duplicate it five times. Um, so then what we do is we just go down and we just change out, switch out the interests. So let me just go to the first one, which we did, so that we can change that into uh, the name of it, because we named it Pug. So let me just call this one, there we go, copy. So name of interest, this is what I mean. Pog. And uh, we could also put mobile if we really wanted to because that gives us an indication. Um, you know, when we come back and if this starts making us money, then what we can do is um, split it out and start using desktop only and, uh, and stuff like that. So let's just name this mobile as well. There we go. So then it's just a case of switching out the interests. And uh, you know, to do that, we just to target different angles, different, um, you know, say for example, this is a small dog product. We could just target a uh, French bulldog. And um, then we'll just copy that there, French bulldog, scroll up, French bulldog, untick that one, go down, change it out again, switch out this. Um, so yeah, you know, it's as, it's as simple as that. Realistically, that that's what we're doing. Is we're um, we're just doing that. We can just do Chihuahua now, um, you know, and, and switch those out. Now, generally, in terms of audience size, uh, let me just do Chihuahua while it's there. 
there we go so we again we just go down there and just switch out so that we've got six different interests so we can test the variables um in terms of audience size because i know that some people do ask that question if you've got a low budget generally try and go for and your p's and your pixels not seasoned or anything like that generally try to go for like anything from one mil up to uh 15 to 20 mil um you know anything over if you're going for large ones such as 50 100 mil um and your pixels not seasoned or you haven't really had much success with facebook then you're generally not gonna your adverts just going to pretty much get eaten up in, in, in the field. So we're trying to aim for, you know, uh, 1 to 15 mil if possible. So that is pretty much how you would set up that advert. Again, you'd always you'd sm switch up all of these. So you've got six individual ad sets, uh, their interests, and we've got two creatives above, uh, two creatives inside each ad set. So going back to this now, um, you can see here what I've mentioned is that exactly how it is. We've got our website purchase campaign. We've got um, our different interests there. I've just put five. You can have as many as you want. And each of them are going to a different creative. So analyzing, how do you actually analyze your results then? Well, first and foremost is ROAS is king. If your campaign falls out of these upcoming guides, which I'm going to let you know what they are, but the ROAS is still positive, then continue to run it. You know, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day, if it's making money and your CPM is high, it's going to be harder to scale, but you're making money. So don't turn things off. So if after 24 hours, uh, you want to kill an ad set, if, it, if the CPMs are over 15 to $17, um, if it's high, like I mentioned, uh, it's really going to be very hard to scale. Just kill the ad set. Kill ad sets if your unique cost per link click is over one dollar. Again, kill the ad set. If um, let me just say kill campaign. There we go. So kill campaign if uh, if no add to carts in the entire campaign. Uh, kill a campaign. So if you've got a uh, if you're running a campaign and you've spent say fifty dollars or whatever it may be or sixty dollars and you've had no add to carts whatsoever, just scrap it. Move on to a different product. But remember, if your campaign passes this, then run it on for another 24 hours. Remember, if your campaign is profitable, but it's outside of these metrics, continue to run it. So if your campaign CPMs are high, but you've made sales, then keep it running. Remember to, of course, check your ad creatives as well, because we're doing, we've got two there and not just one. Which one's giving you best metrics, your best click-through rate? Now, after 48 hours, kill the campaign if there's uh zero to one zero to three sales that are not profitable then just kill the campaign remember if they're not profitable if you've got um ad sets out of spent up to ten dollars so after ten after two days you should have spent kind of ten dollars per ad set and they haven't had any add to carts whatsoever then again that's a very good sign that it's not an ad set or an interest that's very much interested so just turn off that ad set now, if your campaign passes this, again, run it for 24 hours. Remember, if your campaign is profitable, but it's outside of these metrics, then continue to run it. Now, this is a very bonus point at the bottom, which a lot of people ask me about. So if your first 24 hours were great, okay, you had a fantastic first three days, first 24 hours, it had three sales, but then on day two, you got no sales whatsoever, losing all your profit, then keep it running for another 24 hours, okay? Some people will think, ah, oh, damn, you know, I've lost all my profit, it's a dud, and analyze things based on one day. Facebook has its ups and downs, so continue to run it for to another 24 hours. Now, after 72 hours, kill ad sets that have spent 3x your profit margin with no sales, cut those off. Uh, again, ad sets with unique uh, cost per link clicks, which have risen over a dollar, get the, get rid of those. And again, previously, after the 42 hours, we would have got rid of anything which didn't have an ad to cart or, um, you know, um, anything like that. So we would, have neg we would have stomped on those ones straight away. Now, if your campaign has four plus profitable sales on day three, then it could have legs. Okay, you could be looking to scale things. However, if all of these are just coming from one or two ad sets, then there's a high chance that this isn't a winner, but it's something that you may be able to gain steady sales from. You know, you may have put this campaign live with six to, you know, eight ad sets, and uh, it may be profitable, but only two ad sets are profitable. Nine times out of 10, there's a high chance that this thing isn't gonna be a winning campaign, but it could be not a winning gold campaign, but it could be a, um, you know, a lower level campaign that can bring in sales for yourself. And also remember to break down your data as well, look at your demographics, your age, gender, placements, to have very much help you scale further. 
Now, never scale an ad set without having three plus profitable sales. If you've had, you know, two profitable sales or one profitable sale, don't try and scale it. Some people ask me all of the time, I've had one profitable sale, I've had two profitable sales. If you haven't had minimum three, don't touch it, leave it until that it, till it reaches that data point, very crucial data point. Now, if you want to win $25, like I've mentioned, uh, you've got to the end of the video, then it's simple, it's easy. All you got to do is comment hashtag beast gang down below, along with the words of uh, what you liked or what you learned from this video. And I'll be going to pick someone at total random to have that sent over um, to yourself. It's as simple as that. So I hope you got, uh, make sure of course that you got and actually start to implement this information because people, this is very much free content, free information that you guys can have. Take it and capitalize it on as best as you possibly can. So I hope you got some value from this video. If you did, then make sure you, of course, you like, comment, and make sure you smash that subscribe button and be sure to, of course, to hit the notification bell as well. We're nearing up to 25 subscribers with the Beast Gang very soon. So uh, so yeah, let's hit that milestone ASAP. If you wanna learn more from me on a personal basis and learn advanced scaling strategies and testing strategies that I'm using, then make sure you check out EconBeast 2.0, my course. And if you use the code YouTube100, you're gonna get $100 off the price. Hit me up on Instagram, drop me a like, drop me a DM, drop me a follow, and we can try and connect on there. And make sure you join in the free Facebook mastermind group as well. We all connect with each other. The link for that will be down below as well. So that is it for this video. I'll be back with another one helping you make big strides inside of your e-commerce business. Take care and I'll see you later.